and all and welcome to episode 218 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, coming to you live from YouTube. I need to go through the usual rigmarole of making sure, this is where I always feel that, like I'm going to poke you in the eye. Um, that's looking okay there. Are things looking okay here? No, nothing coming through on the tablet. Okay, here we go. And I need to watch an advert as well. First comment goes to Paul Selection saying, hello from Bangkok. Thank you very much for tuning in. And Rich Mitch says, I did a first impressions on the new Les Andemodable. Good stuff in my opinion. Ah, so there we are. Okay, the plan for today is that we are doing one of our longer episodes where we're going to be talking about a, a, a few perfumes and trying to get a classic choice in there as well. So uh, before we do the first sniff, which will be of this one here, the, the brand new from Les Andemodables, which is always uh, a, an exciting prospect. I think it's actually the first time I'm doing something brand new from them following... Um, my discovery of the brand a little while ago. Fahmi says hi from Indonesia. John Hong says finally got a chance to tune into your live stream and uh, Frag Chaitan says hello from Chicago. You're all very welcome and I should say please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos and also please do consider supporting my work on Coffee. You will find details of all of that in the video description below a little while um, after the end of this broadcast. Um, uh, Paolo Viega says, hello, sir. I'm stopping from reading my Dorit <laughs> to tune in to you. Mystery Forms, greetings from Canada, West Coast. Uh, Joanna's in London. Eric, as ever, from Texas. Um, Rich Mitch is saying, Les Andemodables no longer have a stockist in the UK because because of Brexit. And that sad note, I suppose, is, is a good note on which to spray this. Now, if you are not aware of this brand, Les Andemodables, the... Um, the Indemodables, the ones that will never be uh, out of mode. Um, do check out the video that I've done on them, and you should just be able to search for it on YouTube or look for it on the blog. And I also, a little while ago, did an interview with the founders of the brand, uh, whose names <laughs> escape me now. Hang on, it was Remy and Valerie Pulverai, wasn't it? I think. Um, well, it was certainly Valerie Pulvera, according to this press release here, and all of their recent scents are made by um, Antoine Lee, and this one is no exception, and here we go. Um, I have smelt this before, so this isn't a genuine first-time thing. This is called, can you see that there? This is called Ombre Suprême, brand new from Les Andemodables. I think it's, it, it has only just come out, and I shall spray some now. I want to spray some now because I want to come back to this one as well. So I do want to have an initial sniff of it with you and talk through the little press blurb. But I absolutely want to come back to it because this is one that um, absolutely needs uh, the development that comes with time. Um, so I've just, just sprayed some here. Let's pop that on there. And what you get at the beginning... And I think this applies to a few uh, Les Andemodables scents that really, really sneak up on you and creep up on you. Their beauty creeps up on you. So you smell this, which I did for the first time maybe a week ago, a few days ago, and I've worn it a couple of times since then. And I'm smelling it and thinking, okay, this is this is this is pleasant enough. Um, cool spices rising up to the top, you know, maybe something like cardamom or maybe the fizz of ginger. But certainly I smell it. I don't know. I don't know if you'll feel the same way the first time you come across it. And I thought, mm, OK, using a word like suprême, supreme in the name, using, uh, you know, amber, which we, we need to be careful because in French that that can sometimes very directly refer to ambergris as well, as opposed to the amber accord which is how we tend to use the word in English, um, a, a, a very, very soft, gentle, floral inflection coming through of, you know, maybe soft, petally garden flowers, nothing nothing too demanding. And their other scents are so... Most of their other scents are so large and bold and beautiful and fascinating and interesting and rich and dense. And I smelt this and thought... Um, Hmm, is, 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 this, is this meant to be something a little bit more toned down? But then time passed, and I thought, wow. So we're just going to put this to one side. Let us read the um, release, actually. Um, 
Although maybe no, maybe no, no, no. Let me rethink that one. I think the press release will make a little bit more sense after the time has passed and we come back to it. So you can tell that I'm going to be that I'm going to be singing its praises. So I'm just going to take this little press release leaflet and put it aside. It also came, and this was something. It came with a tincture, an actual ambergris tincture, which says here that it was um, obtained through an ultrasound technique. So I definitely want to talk to the pulverize a little bit more about that one. So we sprayed it, we'll come back to it. Um, I will go to comments and then we'll go right to the other end of the market spectrum. So who have we got here? Um, 08 Patty Cakes says greetings from historic Charleston. SC, what's SC? What state is that? Was that going to be South Carolina? Am I right? Is SC South Carolina? I don't know. Um, Sire P, we love you, says Mr. Darkshines. Uh, I love you too, I suppose I should say. Um, Melissa says, hello from the Rio Grande Valley in Texas. I'm glad to catch you live. Very glad to be caught. Hello from New York, says Fata Morgana. Hi from Saigon, Mr. Persele, says Greg Harvey. Love uh, Les Andamodables. Purchased two full bottles after experiencing their sample set. And Nina is saying hello from Dublin, T. Kuda from Virginia, USA, and Lynn saying hello from Los Angeles, California. Okay, so that's been sprayed. Put it to one side. Let's now go to this perfume that some of you may have heard of. Um, Shimon is saying hi from Warsaw. Where's that? <laughs> Tesh, nice to see your name pop up. Um, Lord Charfield, oh, hang on. <laughs> was, the, was that a really, really good typo that you just retracted? Um, anyway, the 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 um, Chanel number no. five hundredth birthday um, celebrations are now basically coming to a close with the final set of releases, um, and I think the information about them went public uh, two days ago. Two days ago, Lord Charfield, I love the fact that you so you wrote greetings from Codner Park, but the first thing that came up was Gretens from Codner. That was better. That that was much better. So. One of the things that we have got is the, the this limited edition presentation of the, let me get this right, of 100 mils of uh, the Eau de Parfum and 100 mils of the um, L'Eau. And it's slightly different packaging. I'm not going to spray this and smell it, but I, I'm, I just want to kind of, for the sake of completeness, talk about um, all of the 100th anniversary stuff, because there's also another thing that doesn't seem to have got a lot of publicity um, that they've that they've released. I do, I must admit, I do, I do like this. I don't know why, it just tickles me having a sort of number five cardboard cutout type thing. And we're all meant to be wowed by the fact that there is, on this limited edition bottle, there is a golden number five, um, but uh, happy birthday, number five. What else are we meant to say? What do we think of this, by the way? Um, what are your thoughts? Number five has sparked wonder for over 100 years, the brand says, and lives as a reminder of the absolute freedom of the creator who made it a success, etc., etc. A hundred years later, Chanel has created a new, new and unique version of number five, uh, Eau de Parfum. For the first time ever, the bottle incorporates recycled glass. Okay while keeping its incomparably pure, sparkling, transparent look. The product of a long-standing partnership with Porsche du Courval, a living heritage company. This high-quality glass was obtained using an innovative recycling technology. The box has also been redesigned, made with biodegradable paper pulp. It feels sensuous to the touch. That's exactly what I was thinking as I was touching it. Ooh, this, no, never mind. Calm down, Persilis. Um, Made with biodegradable paper, it feels sensuous to the touch and closely enfolds the distinctive shape of the legendary bottle. So as I say, um, we've got one for the EDP, which has got a gold number five on the label, and the one for the Lo has got a silver number five on the label. Um, some of you will be aware as well that one thing that they have done is that they've created um, a, a number five advent uh, calendar, an advent calendar that goes all the way to the December 31st, because even advent calendars aren't meant to, I can't, I can't be allowed to finish on Christmas Day now. That is a very, very expensive item, but you can search that out on the net for yourselves and see all of the different things that are in it. And one final thing. 
that some of you may not be aware of. Um, what are the comments, by the way? What are the responses to this one? Eric says, I wish Chanel would do a special version of Au Premier. I wore it yesterday and adored every moment. That is pretty special. Very, very special. Um, and what else have we got? Uh, Chanel would never have put the five like that, says Gavin. You mean what? Herself? Yeah, maybe not. And my blurry eyes deceived me. I thought the bottle was white, says Lana, and would have been beautiful. Now, that would have been interesting, actually, an all-white bottle. This is really playing havoc with the white balance on the um, camera, isn't it? Um, got here just in time to see Mr P enjoying the sensuous touch of biodegradable paper. Let's have that moment again. <laughs> um, and Paolo Viega says, I think this is worth the price due to its possible resale value in a few years. Too much PC from Chanel. Um, says T. Kuda. Ah, ah, here we go, DJ. You have taken the words out of my mouth because DJ is saying, where's your 2021 mil bottle? Because the, the final thing that they have released or they have made available for the 100th anniversary celebrations is a Baccarat crystal bottle of number five extrait, okay? Apparently the largest bottle of the extra they have ever created because it will contain, as DJ has just said, 2,021 mils of Chanel No. 5 extra. 2021, get it? Okay, this is for you know benefit of people who may be watching this video in five years' time. So over two litres of Chanel No. 5 extra. Now, if you don't know how much they are going to be charging for it, don't look it up now. Don't look it up. I will tell you how much it's going to um, cost in the UK. Have a guess. Have a guess. I think only 55 bottles of this thing are going to be made. And apparently only one or two are going to be... Uh, uh, try again. Apparently only one or two are going to be made available in the UK. Um, and only at the um, Bond Street Boutique. So DJ is saying 10k at least... Oh, you need to specify currency here. Let's go with pounds sterling, okay? So ten ten thousand pounds at least. Cloudy's saying five thousand pounds, ten thousand pounds or more. Joanna's saying twenty thousand pounds, two hundred and twenty thousand two hundred and ten pounds. Okay, I will put you out of your misery. You're starting to get a little bit closer. Twenty five thousand pounds. No, the video hasn't frozen. We were just pausing there. £25,000 for just over two litres of number five extra in a Baccarat bottle. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> Megan, I'm sorry, somebody passed Megan a bucket. Megan has just <laughs> thrown up. <laughs> Cloudy is crying because they're not a millionaire. Um, Olfactophile says, well, that's less than I thought, but still insanely expensive. I have ordered two already because um, I'm doing quite well out of these YouTube videos at the moment so I can easily afford to. Shimon is coming, the voice of reason. With all this marketing chutzpah I wonder why they're not selling number five scented face masks. <gasps> Maybe that's one of the things in the advent calendar, <laughs> who knows. Chanel needs to get over itself, says Fata Morgana. Um, so yeah. And, 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 it comes with, I seem to remember from the press release that it comes with a wand not a magic wand, okay? Not a, you don't get magic powers with it. A wand that you can use, I guess, to dip into this huge two-liter bottle of number five extra, um, and and apply number five to yourself with a wand. Olfacto Five says the advent calendar has four days of stickers. Better than three days of stickers, I suppose. Um, a wand and a butler to help you apply it. Ah. <laughs> Anyway, we can have a good laugh about things like that, but I think you and I know that those 55 bottles of that extra will be sold. They will sell them, maybe not straight away, but they will sell them before the year is out. I'm sure they will sell them. I think it should come with a magic one for 25k, says all factor files. Um, so Terry, Terry's done a quick conversion for us. Uh, I guess £25,000 would be about $35,000 at the moment, so there you go. I wonder how much it costs in the US, though. I wonder if it's actually more like $25,000 US, because prices tend to be a little bit lower. In the, that would be something on which you could um, 
definitely make a saving. Does the wand vibrate, says Gavin. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, they'll sell out right away, I bet, says Olfacto Files. And Shimon is saying, with every meal taken out, you turn back time just a little bit. Yes, it's 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 the picture of Dorian number five. Anyway, we need to we need to move on. God, the, the comments the comments are. What's this now? You think if you put? Did you think if you poured all two thousand and twenty one meals on yourself, you would be a walking nuclear reactor, or break the Geneva Convention law on chemical warfare? What are you trying to say about the composition of number five? Anyway, so this is my bit on the final bit of the Chanel number five anniversary. I think th th amongst us, the general feeling is maybe that things were just a little, tiny little bit underwhelming. I would have loved, as, as other people said on this channel, I would have loved to have seen a limited edition of number five, either the EDP or the extra, whatever, but in the original bottle with that very, very flat stopper. That would have been amazing. But I guess maybe they thought it, it it wouldn't be worth their while. So let's go back to the beginning of the video. Let's go back to Les Andes de Modable and their um, Ombre Suprême because I wanted to give it a little bit of time to want. And now other stuff is happening. Now suddenly the spices and the fruity inflections and an oranginess are there. But there's real, real, real darkness and interest coming through. There's something that could be woody, could be patchouli, could be musky, but whatever it is, it feels very, 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 very intimate and sensual. And in fact, I'm going to touch the biodegradable paper while I smell this. So I'm going to put my Hannibal Lecter voice on. I watched Silence of the Lambs the other day on the big screen, still as good as ever. Yes, actually, it does make the biodegradable paper feel even more sensuous, Clarice. Um, no, and this is th this is when things start getting interesting, after a little bit of time has passed. So, let us see what the brand wants us to know about this one. In Ombre Suprême by Les Andes de Modable, perfumer Antoine Lee puts the spotlight on ambergris, the mythical perfume ingredient whose subtle powers of amplification are usually in the background of the fragrance. This composition features ambergris in a 10% dosage. Now, if they're saying it, I believe them, because this is not the kind of brand that, you know, tells porky pies. Specially sourced and tinctured using proprietary uh, ultrasound extraction by the Atelier Francais des Matières, which is, of course, where, where Rémy Poulvare works. One of the incredible things about ambergris is its ability to amplify facets of other ingredients, while at the same time marrying them seamlessly together, softening their edges and angles. When ambergris is in a composition, it pulls together all the ingredients and bathes them with its golden glow. There is a, there is an amb, well, an ambery kind of a dark golden glow here, like a lamp turning on in a room full of beautiful objects. Uh, Les Andes Modable founder Valérie Poulvray says, Ambergris is akin to lace in haute couture design. It's strong, but you have to be careful with the material. We wanted to highlight all of its facets from the ambery, animalic, to the mineral, marine-like and salty without being too aggressive. And there, there, there is nothing aggressive about this either, and yet it is so, 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 so powerful. It's going to be one of these ones where I'm thinking, oh, I need to start saving up for a full bottle again, I think. Ombre Suprême opens with a blast of spice, woods and florals, with cardamom, uh, cinnamon and pink peppercorn accenting its radiant heart of jasmine and orange flower. And absolutely all of those things are in there. As it settles on skin, it mellows into a dry down as delicate and diaphanous as gossamer, as if the notes were now experienced behind a panel of sheer silk with flashes of clary sage like the woven leaves on a garland. You know, when you get a press release like this, when you get a leaflet like this, you, you just, you don't, you don't have to do any work. You can just sort of read it and go, yeah, yeah, absolutely agreed. Tick, tick, tick. But Ombre Suprême is not all lightness. Ambergris can reveal the darkness of a composition's facets as well as its brightness. And Ombre Suprême morphs occasionally into something animalic, mineral and dark, with Immortel, Castorium and Harassium casting a shadowy sensuality into Ombre Suprême's otherwise bright corners. Now, I think it does so in, in a kind of tempered way. So this, this, this isn't a dark, heavy, dirty, animalic scent like another one that I want to share with you today, which was also like a kind of head-blown moment. I smelt that for the first time the other day and I thought, gosh, that needs to be shared in a video. But 
But I guess the point is that it's not all spice and flowery and lightness. It is very, very, very contrasted, very, very interesting, very complex. Ambergris provides a sheen, a feeling to Ombre Suprême, says Antoine Lee. He likens the fragrance to an engaging book that takes time to unfold and reveal its secrets. So if you do manage to get a sample of this, do not just do a first sniff thing and also spray it on skin. At first it might feel like there are a lot of characters in the story and you're not clear of their interaction, says Lee, but suddenly there's a chapter that brings them together, sorry, brings them and the story together, and then you can't put the book down. Ombre Suprême is that kind of composition. The drama is not all happening in the top notes. And I think that was the thing that came to my mind the first time I wore this, was that I thought, thank goodness, hooray for Remy and Valérie Poulopay for fighting for the dry down, for trying to reinstate the status of the dry down, because the dry down is not all that important in a lot of mainstream brands. They put a lot more attention to the top notes and the mid notes, and they kind of hope that we forget about the dry down, but not this lot. This this is, and another brand that I think is still absolutely dead set on the dry down, even though I haven't smelt their stuff for a while, is Nikolai. Patricio de Nikolai, always seems to think about the dry down and then sort of build things on top of it to make sure that that final thing you get from the scent is worth the journey. Delicate yet sensual, radiant yet dark and animalic, Ombre Suprême has a fresh yet haunting beauty like its crown jewel ingredient, the paradoxical ambergris, its elusive yet unmistakable star. And I genuinely don't know what else to add because I find myself agreeing with so many of the phrases here. So fresh yet haunting. Yes, it it isn't overly heavy or dense or thick and yet it does linger and it does have a sort of fresh transparency to it. Um, from their notes list they the, for the top they've got aldehydes, um, clary sage oil from Switzerland, uh, Madagascar pink pepper and Indian cardamom oil. In the mid they've cited uh, orange flower, um, nerily, uh, ja Jasmine Absolute from India. No, hang on. I think the lines have gone here. Jasmine Absolute from Morocco and patchouli oil from... And I don't know. The lines have gone a bit funny here, but we've got Jasmine and patchouli. And in the base, 10% of this ultrasound obtained ambergris tincture, uh, an ultrasound extract of Immortel from France, from our private field in Provence, it says. And 50 mils of this is going to set you back 210 euros and that is a lot of money. It's not £25,000, but I would rather not buy four bottles at €50 Euros and save up to buy this stuff. This is, going to, this is going to be something that I will need to keep revisiting, actually. And I think the last time I felt like this about a scent, in the sense of needing to give it tons and tons of time, was when I first encountered uh, Frederick Mal's Fleur de Cassis. By the way, in case you're wondering, I put, I put the ambergris tincture on my skin, on, on the back of my wrist. Today, yeah, that was today. And that's pretty potent stuff as well. Really, really strange and marine-like and animalic and ambery and mysterious. And it, it's, it's just a wonderfully complex piece of work. Um, let's pop that on there. Let's do the black and the white together to see, see whether they... And let's make sure we label this. Now, I've completely ignored comments. So let's see what people have been saying. Um, it puts the perfume on its skin. So, so I get the reference, having just seen the silence of the lambs recently. Oh dear, I need to be careful what I say because you're always several steps ahead of me. Um, uh, Terry says, have you seen the new strips that when you spray them they turn a different colour or show an image? No, really? Who's doing that? Are you being serious? Um, Lynn says, Ombre Suprême sounds so good. It really is. Olfactophile says, Les Andes haven't let me down yet. Can't wait to try this. Um, I can't wait to smell this. Um, Gavin says, it sort of sounds like the original version of one of the Dior fragrances. Can't remember which one. And then somebody says, Ombre Nuit. Maybe, but that, that always... My brother wore that a lot. That always felt bit more salty to me than this. Um, 
Joe Ripped says, finally catch you live. Um, I've just started discovering this brand. Ultrasound Extract says, Lynn, I'll have to Google that. And Paolo says, it's a lot of money, of course, but they use ambergris in a 10% concentration. You know where the value is. Ingredients and um, craftsmanship. Milard says, amouage dry downs are also worth spending money on. Um, with which I would absolutely agree. Okay, so we've kind of done two because I wanted to mention that one. Um, let's go to let's go to something different. Because let's go to something. I I I sometimes um. Right, take a deep breath. Try again, Persilace. I feel that maybe I am guilty of. I'm surprised Creed have left any ambergris for anyone else, says Gavin. <laughs> I feel that sometimes I'm guilty of not giving enough attention to very, very mainstreamy brands, says he, having just mentioned Chanel Number no. 5. But you know what I mean. So I thought, um, let's do this. Let's do a Burberry Hero, because I haven't smelt it properly yet, and it's the first um, pillar for men from Burberry for a while, and it's got an ad campaign with... Um, Adam Driver, who is an actor that I rate normally, um, what does this bottle remind me of? Because I know it reminds me of something, but I can't think what. Um, Adam Driver looking like he hasn't been eating much lately, but maybe maybe that was part of the deal for the um, insane amount of money that, that he got. Frappin, thank you. Yes, actually. Yes, you're right, thank you. Okay, that has put my mind to rest. I had an initial sniff of this, but weeks and weeks and weeks ago, and I thought, hmm, let's come back to it. So let's see. So this is this is what the mainstream is telling us men should melt, so, uh, smell like at the moment. It looks like Terre, says Eric. Yeah, there is something Terre-like going on here. Terre, by the way, is celebrating 15 years, so we need to do a Terre video. Gavin says, oh God, that name, such an obviously marketed thing like that Enrique Iglesias song. Um, and Shimon says it's like Vars Vodatalatova. When did Vars come out? Now, those of you watching in Poland, that's a nice parallel reference for you. So Vars, I think, was a scent that was available back in the day when Poland was part of the so-called Eastern Bloc. Does anybody remember what Vars smelt like? No, I know you meant the bottle design, Shimon. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. So let's see what Google. Google Google Vars Polish perfume or something, and you'll probably see that it's not unlike that. Okay, let's let's spray it. So this is Hero, new pillar for men from Burberry. Maybe Vars was better. Um, okay, don't exaggerate, Persilase, because it's not it's not Creed. Gavin says you're going to hate it, I think. <laughs> no, okay, I don't hate it. I don't love it. Um, DJ says, does this have the scratchy wood thing they love to chuck a lot in main, men's mainstream fragrances? Ambery woods. Yes, it does. And I think that's the thing that hit me first. It's just upsetting. Eric says, could have been worse. No, absolutely. It could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. There are things out there that are way, 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 way worse than this. But what's happening at the top? There is something... What's the What's the original... Sorry, not original, but old boss. Um, is, it, is it the old Hugo boss that, that had that kind of apple note um, to it? I think this opens a little bit with that. So it's maybe sort of like apple with ambery woods. Okay, I mean, it's not making me run for the for the hills and a sort of soapy cleanliness to it but loving the repressed grimaces they say a lot says cloudy um hmm hmm hero you know something called hero i don't know but it's better than invictus that's for sure i'm i'm flicking through to see what might come up uh on the, what what there might be on the press release so, Chief, Burberry Chief Creative Officer says, creating a fragrance is such a personal and intimate process. 
And I especially felt this for Burberry Hero, my first fragrance for the brand. So this is Ricardo Tisci, right? I wanted, or is it Tis is it Tisci? Must be Tisci. Tisci? Tisci. There we are. I wanted Burberry Hero to encapsulate modern masculinity. Dullness. To play on the essence of primal human and animal instincts, channeling the duality between strength and sensitivity. I am so thrilled to have worked with the amazing Adam Driver to embody Burberry Hero for the house. He has this incredible depth in articulating what masculinity means today, how strength can be subtle and emotions can empower. Tell us something about the fragrance, Ricardo. So let's just skip all of this stuff. Quote from Adam Driver. I'm very happy to be working with Burberry on the Burberry Hero fragrance campaign and with designer Ricardo Tisci in representing his first fragrance for the brand. Thanks for that, Adam. Um, <laughs> is there going to be anything about the perfume? About the fragrance, okay, there's just a few lines about the fragrance. Okay, it tells us who made it. It's Aurélien Guichard. Okay, that's good. Name check the perfumer. The fragrance is, so that there's, there's, there's something about the ad campaign, duality, the power of the animal kingdom, the vivid metaphor of a man becoming a mythical, mythical creature in the powerful sea, yada, yada, yada. So, the fragrance. The fragrance is brightened with sparkling bergamot and invigorated with juniper and black pepper. This vibrant scent is deepened with a heart of warm cedar wood of three distinct origins, Virginia, the Atlas Mountains, and the Himalayas. And then Aurelien Guichard says, Burberry Hero represents the duality between strength and sensibility. If you haven't got the duality idea by now, you haven't been paying attention. A scent that represents the timelessness of Burberry, and at the same time, the sense of modernity. A blend of universality and uniqueness. The scent expresses the animality that is inside each man, alongside a true humanity. How many different ways are there of saying absolutely nothing at all? The bottle is strong and modern like the fragrance it carries. Its angular shape is an abstract reinterpretation of a horse's hoof. And there you are. Okay, and that's been out nationwide in the UK since September. £76 for 100 mils. I want to see what you're saying about it because th that press release is probably just about as nondescript as the scent. I mean, it's it's just about harmless. It's definitely more sort of veering in the direction of harmless than, than, than Creed. But why? Why would you put all the time and resources into something that actually is just a bit bland? So what are you saying? Uh, best part about the fragrance is probably the magnetic cap, says Time to Mask Up. Um, Venice B says, this is so much more fun live. Glad to have caught it. You're very welcome. Does it smell like the typical shower gel designer thing, says Tom Dick Dickinson? I suppose. Oh, and we're back to Vars. Tomasz says, Vars Eau de Cologne is my favourite Polish cologne anyway. It smells like 4711. Ah, splashed all over a man's rough face who has just been thrown out of a Bowery saloon. <laughs> Where have you been hanging out, Tomasz? Cloudy says, any mention of Hugo Boss reminds me of dragging my brother around the shopping centre fragrance aisles as a teen to try to get him into fragrance. Did not work. <laughs> and Eric is going, a horse's hoof? Was the, Is that a line from... Is it Goodfellas where they're going, the hoof, you know, the hoof, the, 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 the use the knife to get the thing out of the hoof. <laughs> the film references just keep going today. Um, Burberry, the perfume brand that promises the wearer complete anonymity, says Kim. Oh, I like that. I like that. They should, they should, they should market that. Why is my stream not working here? Okay. Um, Paolo says, why do they bother to write all of that? The ones that read the press release usually know that all, all of this is bleep and mass market dullness. It's Fred Flintstone after psychotherapy, says I, I like that as well. A medieval painter's interpretation of a horse's hoof, maybe. Well, I kind of, I mean, but maybe you haven't seen the horse that they were basing it on. Maybe it's horse that's got, like, troubled hoof. For, I don't know, maybe Joe Pesci's been at the horse. Okay. Um, this is, we, we, seriously, I don't, we don't need to be as harsh on this one as we would on something like Versace Eros or something like that. But anyway, we've smelt it, we've, we've done our time. Now, let's go to something much more interesting. I don't have a full bottle of this, unfortunately. I, I've just got a little vial, a uh, sample vial that I procured. But gosh, this is another one that, um, why is it all the good stuff is always so expensive? But Christmas is coming, right? This is this is from a brand that I rate very highly anyway. Um, I, I, I don't think they've made a single bad perfume. There are definitely some that are like more than others. It's Naomi Goodser, okay? And speaking of horses, this is called Corpus Equus. So I think that means 
um, horse's body, right? And let's dip that in here. Now, Naomi Gutzer as a brand do tend towards leathers, leathery scents, even though I think they personally would disagree. I think it's because they like leather so much that they 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 think there's tons of variation in the brand and of course there is some variation you know, they've got they've got an iris they've got a beautiful tuberose one of the most beautiful tuberoses of recent years um but but things with them do tend to veer towards the dark and this is so corpus equus right I, i'm i'm not um horsey in any way shape or form in fact I think I've probably never ridden a horse. I was probably placed upon a pony. Actually, speaking of Poland, somewhere in Krynica, Krynica Górska, which is down south, a sort of mountain skiing resort where you used to go and take the waters. I don't know if one still does that. And I think there's a picture of me on a pony. Um, but... So I, I don't have horsey associations, is what I'm trying to say. To me, this is leather, but then I suppose leather and horse riding and equestrianism, Hermès, etc. are all very closely related to each other. And this, when I just put some on skin from that tiny little vial the other day, it was again one of those... <clears throat> it was one of those moments where you think... You've smelt tons of leathers before. Uh, leather together with, with incense, maybe one of my favourite perfumery genre or categories. So I've, I've smelt tons of them, you know, Kinesia 10. Um, I don't have horsey association, says Rich. Yeah, is, that, is this going to be my tagline for the video now? Um, what is the leather we're talking about right now, says Drew Badesco. So this is Corpus Equus from Naomi Goodser, but Kinesia 10, Leather Rood. What else are there? Throw some other leathers at me. Um, Tom of Finland, I suppose you could say, is a leathery scent. Lone Star Memories, those sorts of scent. I, there are tons and tons and tons in my collection, and I love them all, uh, and, and I enjoy wearing them. But this one made me think, wow, I, I don't think I've smelled quite... the Cuir d'Ange, thank you very much from Hermès, again another favourite. I don't think I've ever smelt qu quite this particular inflection, this particular take on the material. And maybe it is because they themselves, according to their site, um, were inspired by uh, a horse. Tuscan leather. The, that, that's probably the closest that this comes to. Tom Ford Tuscan leather. But what makes it different from Tuscan leather? It's a shame I haven't got some here to do a side by side. This is... Okay, this is drier. So you know how Tuscan leather plays that kind of Kinesia 10 trick of taking a tart sort of cheap strawberry, cheap raspberry, tart, fruity note at the top and placing it over a really, really beautiful leather accord. This sort of dispenses with that idea um, and gives you dryness, dryness, dryness. So, for those of you who have got lots of perfumeries uh, on your doorstep, if you can think of a combination of Mathilde Laurent's Leur Fougueuse for Cartier and Tuscan leather, so that fiery, tempestuous, windswept feeling of the, the, the leatheriness, of the dryness of the Leur Fougueuse, with the, with the power of Tuscan leather, um, you, would, you will get a sense of what this Corpus Equus is like. It is just... You, you can just see dust being kicked up by these hooves as they're galloping, 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 racing across some desert landscape and it's definitely a desert landscape here it's parched 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 dry sand really really arid and yet amongst all of this death and aridity and dryness there is this supreme expression of life force with these stallions just racing across i mean it's it's just I, I I was just blown away, really, really blown away. And I want to wear it properly, but I had to share it with you straight away. I haven't got a huge amount of info on it. Uh, the, 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 as I say, this is a sample that I just managed to get myself. Naomi Goodser and Perfumer Bertrand Duchafour, their website says, are honoured to present Corpus Equus, an interpretation of a horse smell, but not just any. Naomi's favourite steed. This perfume is a colour, 
a silence. Now, to me, it's not silence because it's just, you know, like, just, just galloping, galloping. A rhythm, a light, a black composition with animalistic notes. Corpus Equus pays homage to the noble and wild nature of an Arabian stallion, fiery, intrepid and hot-blooded with an elegant gait. But yeah, elegant is not powerful enough. I mean, this is just force. Um, sorry, to go from to go from Silence of the Lambs to Goodfellas to Madonna's Confessions Tour. If any of you were fortunate enough to watch uh, Madonna's Confessions Tour, which came to the UK, I think, in 2006, there was a, there was a stunning opening um, shot, actually, by a Polish uh, cinematographer. I think it was shot by Janusz Kamiński, who tends to work a lot with, with Spielberg. And, and it there was a lot of horsey imagery in that show because it came not long after um, Madonna recovered from a horse riding accident. But there was there was a moment there that you could only get if you were watching the show live. You, you can't recreate it at home unless you've got like an insane sound system. Because while the opening showed some stallions galloping off into the distance, the sound was so powerful that you actually felt this... You know how you only get that chest thumping effect from the bass when you're in a uh, in an arena or a stadium, and this this is this is that this this perfume is that sound that effect that power, um, really really stunning. Um, April Spirit says, "Is it an interesting leather that offers something different?" I would say yes. You need to check. Paolo says, I was interested until you mentioned Tuscan leather. It's just a bit overdone. OK, but try this one. Try this one. Terry Smile says, um, I know Maison Crivelli made the strips for his new fragrances. Oh, we're back to those. OK, I'll read that comment later then. Um, Tomas says, if it was so horsey as Garland's Ambi Rouges, I would possibly go for it. But this one may as well be an Italian stallion, rocky, punchy kind of thing. Yes, because you see, I never think of Ambi Rouges being particularly horsey. That to me is 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 ambery, sweet, vanillic. Um, Terry says, love Madonna, <laughs> fine. Megan goes, horses in and of themselves have a wonderful smell. My friend and I were just discussing how we could bottle the smell. Well, you see, apparently Mathilde Laurent managed it in Le Fougueuse um, for Cartier. So you need to check that out. Um, so let's label that one as well, because I, 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 could, um, I could spend ages smelling this one. And... At this point, as we're at the sort of 42 minute mark, where's the time gone? I should say that you're watching 200, episode 218 of uh, Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, and we're doing a feature length one where we're talking through a, a few different releases. And um, actually, we seem to have done quite a few and, and I was going to do a classic. So le let us let us do let us do a classic choice. Now, this is a kind of classic with a difference because the scent in question is alien. And I thought, I don't think we've ever done a, a Mugler here as a classic choice. Alien, of course, came out in 2005 uh, in a composition made by Dominique Ropion, who wasn't working alone. I think there's lots of information out there on the net about the other um, uh, perfumers that he was working with. But I, I admire Alien. I actually, I think, like Alien more than Angel. I think Alien in, in some ways is more interesting, but Angel was the one that, that really, really took off. But this version that came out in 2012 uh, was it straight away became my favourite version of Alien. And it was a limited edition. I don't think you can get it anymore. This was the Essence Absolue um, Intense EDP. Um, Mugler, as everybody knows, tended to do loads and loads of flankers. I think they are still doing flankers. Um, there's there's a there's a new flanker of um, Alien now, isn't there? I think Alien Goddess, which which I've yet to to smell. But this one um, was very 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 special, and the color of the juice actually gives you a good sense of how the scent operates. Now Alien is without any question one of the most interesting original jasmines ever poured into a bottle. It's 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 a huge musky jasmine, tons and tons of cashmere in that scent, um, and it it's it's hard to pull off. I love smelling alien, but um, I was never able to smell it or, or enjoy smelling it on Madame Persilaise. Whereas actually there is a colleague who used to wear alien. She is still a colleague actually, and interestingly, she sometimes wears Dune and sometimes wears alien, which are two quite quite different sense really um alien goddess is awful to put it nicely says miranda oh dear um is this is this um 
the, the, the after effects of moving from Clarence to L'Oreal, because this, of course, is from the, this scent is from the Clarence days, and uh, now uh, Mugler perfumes are handled by L'Oreal. Um, but this was, this was, you can see why the people who really, really loved Alien weren't so taken with this version, and people who admired Alien but maybe wanted it to be just a little bit more refined, a little bit smoother, um, were really taken with this one. What does it say on the back? Uh, shine with Alien Essence Absoluting You, Eau de Parfum Intense, a bewitching experience inside a drop of gold which lasts forever thanks to the refill bottle, unless, of course, you discontinue the scent. So, thoughts on Alien. Now, the original one was superbly named because it really does feel like there's a kind of sci-fi jasmine spaceship descending upon you, landing um, as soon as you spray it. And it was huge thanks to this combination of a very, very, very powerful, very diffusive jasmine note with a massive slug of cashmere. And the, the woodiness of the cashmere linked with the woodiness of jasmine and created this extremely overwhelming effect, which, as I say, I always found more appealing than, um, than, than, than Angel. This one... This one tones down the volume, but I suppose what it does is it increases the richness. So this feels like, um, this maybe feels like going to the alien home planet. So this isn't just like a sat satellite ship that has landed here on Earth. This is you being taken to the inner core of the planet that Alien comes from, planet Mugler. Um, alien is a track whistle from an inch away. Is a track whistle from an inch away. Maybe my least like feminine, says Eric. Um, Yoshi says, I think Alien Man Fusion is meant to be... Even oh, you were talking about Alien Man. Poor Quality Sandalwood says TWT. Um, whenever I watch sophisticated reviewers, I'm reminded that I always spray the wrong side of my tester trip, says Megan. Oh, well, you can spray any you like. Though. The paper is not different depending on which side, of the, the, you know, which side you hold. Vintage Alien is going for 160 bucks on eBay. Really? I need to hang on to my bottles of Alien then. Um, alien old DNA is still the best, says Cynthia Ferizzi. So that's that's the classic choice for today. So if you want something very, very special, for all I know, this may still be available on some, you know, online auction sites. Um, do seek this one out. Um, alien Essence Absolute. Two very, very quick mentions of... Um, uh, new releases from Killian, for which I don't have the full bottles, but I will sort of put them on the list. I'm, I'm not going to bother with the um, blotters, but I've got samples of Leur Verte and Apple Brandy on the Rocks. Um, I My relationship with the Killian house still remains one of sort of... There are there are some loves, and I actually thought that the that the first releases from the Liqueur collection were pretty good. But the Leur Verte, which is I think by uh, Mathieu Nardin, is meant to be a kind of absinthe scent. It, it's kind of interesting because it's a very sort of seventies throwback feeling fougere, but it. It, it it also feels a little bit crass. I don't know if anybody out there has smelt it. And the apple brandy on the rocks, by Sidonie Lansasseur, um, funnily enough, actually made me think of the boss that I mentioned earlier, um, with its apple note here in the Killian, smelling, sorry to say, much cheaper than anything ever smelt in the boss. So no, I don't think these two new Killians are going to be... Um, making any of my best of lists, but I'm sure they will do very, very well. That seems to be um, the way with so many Killians. I find, I still find that a brand difficult to get my head around because having now um, attended a couple of events with um, Killian Hennessy himself in attendance, I can vouch for the fact that he knows his stuff. He knows perfume, he knows the perfume industry, um, he he can he can talk the talk extremely convincingly, and yet the perfumes don't always seem to match up to that personality. Unlike the other big lauder brand, Frederick Mal. Now, Frederick Mal, um, more often than not, 
puts 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 his money where his mouth is, if you see what I'm saying, and he and, and he and he backs up the talk and the knowledge, um, and the passion with really really high quality products, products which we may not always like, but they're always very interesting. Like I think the jury's still out on Synthetic Jungle, the latest release from Frederick Mal, but look at how people are still talking about it. It definitely has been a talking point. Whereas I don't think that very many Killians are talking points, and yet they should be because the guy. Um, knows his stuff, as I say. He is very, very, very knowledgeable. Uh, Killian has been um, reeling um, bleep for a while. They just don't care anymore. Killian has a handful of loves for me, says Olfacto Files. Uh, Synthetic Jungle, while nice, was nothing special, in my opinion, says DJ. I like the licorice at the start of Leur Verte, says Christine, gets a bit thin and flat eventually. Yeah, see, we were talking about brands that are still interested in the dry down. So we should end by re-smelling the uh the lasagne de modable where is it oh it's here what's it doing now now it's now now it's like an another layer of intimacy i just need to touch that biodegradable paper again oh yes god and and maybe i maybe next time i need to make wear maybe i need to wear a shirt made of the same paper that number four do you think if i wrote to number five and says look can you send me some more of that paper and then i will just make a shirt and Stroke myself. <laughs> oh, God. This is the trouble with live now. I said it and I'm not going to be able to bleep it out now. I need to finish this video now, don't I? Thank you very much for watching episode 218. Ah, did I just say that? Yes, I did say that. Never mind. Um, so, today we smelled Ombre Suprême from Les Andes Modables. We did the Burberry Hero. How's that doing, by the way? Oh, gosh. Oh, that's gone a little bit. Ooh, no, okay, that is the turning rather unpleasant. We did uh, Naomi Goetz's, um Corpus Equus, which now feels a little bit sweeter in contrast. And uh, we talked about the limited edition of uh, number five. And the classic choice was Alien, Essence Absolue, which is actually... You know, there are points of comparison here with Dominique Ropion's Portrait of a Lady and also with uh, the Ombre Suprême. I wonder if they gave them a good budget for that stuff. OK, I need to go before I say anything else potentially controversial. Um, please stay tuned to uh, my social media for details of uh, when the other videos are going to be coming up. I'm going into another busy phase soon but not as busy as the one that I go to go through in May June so hopefully it won't affect the video output too much and yes somebody said soon hitting 10,000 subscribers hopefully we need to think of some way of celebrating I did have an idea but now I'm not I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off so I need to look into it some more but thank you very much for watching be good stay safe I will see you soon